This is the Edexcel GCSE 9 to 1 Maths Foundation Paper 3 from the November 2017 series. Question number 1. We have to write 3758 correct to the nearest 1000. Well here we've got a number line. And if we were to write this number correct to the nearest 1000, then our lower limit will be 3000 and our upper limit will be 4000. The halfway point is 3500 and if we show our number on a number line it's around here We've got 3,758. Because this number is 3,500 or greater, we would have to round up to the 4,000. Question number two. We have to simplify y plus 3y subtract 2y. Well, y plus 3y is 4y subtracting 2y from that, we end up with 2y. Question number 3. We have to write down all the factors of 18. Well, 1 times by 18 gives 18. 2 times by 9 gives 18. 3 times by 6 gives 18. Here are all the factors of 18. Question number four. The table gives information about the prices of cinema tickets. Adult tickets cost £7.80. Child tickets cost £5.80. A family ticket for four people cost £24.30. Mr Edwards and his three children go to the cinema. It is cheaper for Mr Edwards to buy one family ticket rather than four separate tickets. How much cheaper? So, for this question... Let's find out the price by buying four separate tickets. The cost of four separate tickets, well, we've got three child tickets, so that's three times by 580. And then we add on one adult ticket, one adult kit costs 780. And if I work out the cost of four Separate tickets, we have 3 times by 580 plus 1 times by 780. It turns out we get £25.20. £20. So now we can find out the difference between the cost to find out how much cheaper a family ticket is than the cost of 4 separate tickets. So we have £25.20 £20, subtract £24.30 £20, and if I work this out, we get £90. Next, the film starts at 6.45pm. The film lasts 102 minutes. What time does the film finish? Now, the way to think about this is to imagine a number line and we've got our start time which is 6.45pm We're adding on 102 minutes and this 102 minutes we can break up into more manageable chunks to add on. If I add on 60 minutes then we end up with 7 45 p.m. and we want to get to 102 minutes so now 
if we're at 7.45 p.m., well, what I could do is add on 50. Then what we end up with is 8 p.m. So what we've added on here is 75 minutes. So now if I add on another 27 minutes, we will end up at 8. 27 p.m. And so therefore we have 8 27 p.m. for the time the film finishes. Question number five. Tias has a large bottle of shampoo. There are two litres of shampoo in the large bottle. Thias also has some empty bottles. Each small bottle can be completely filled with 150 milliliters of shampoo. How many small bottles can be completely filled with shampoo from the large bottle? Well, first of all, we've got liters and we've got milliliters. To go from liters to milliliters, we would have to multiply by 1000 and milliliters to liters we would have to divide by 1000 and therefore 2 litres if I multiply that by 1000 we get 2000 milliliters so 2 litres times 1000 gives 2000 milliliters. Now each small bottle can be completely filled with 150 milliliters of shampoo. So what we need to do is find out how many bottles we can fill up. We've got 2000 milliliters altogether and we're breaking that up into chunks of 150 milliliters and therefore 2000 divided by 150 that's equal to 13.3 etc so therefore we have 13 bottles so we have 13 bottles Question number six. The incomplete pictogram shows information about the number of cycles sold in a shop on Tuesday, on Wednesday and on Thursday. A total of 20 cycles were sold on Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday. Eight cycles were sold on Friday. And 15 cycles were sold on Saturday. We have to use this information to complete the pictogram. Well, we've got one two three four and then if i add this one and this one what we would have is is five circles representing one cycle and therefore you can see that one circle would represent four cycles now what we know is eight cycles were sold on Friday. So if one circle represents four, then if I create a circle, then here we have eight. And we've got 15 which were sold on Saturday. So to show 15, so far here we've got eight. And then 
adding on another 4, we would get 12. And then we need to show 3. So that's 3 quarters of a circle. So if I have a full circle here, I want 3 quarters of this. As we see here. So if we show a key, we've got this full circle, which equals one full circle. That's equal to four cycles. Question number seven, BCD is a straight line and ABC is a triangle. We have to show that the angle ABC is an isosceles triangle. Give a reason for each stage of your working. Well, what we can do, first of all, is find out what this angle over here is. The angle ACB is equal to 180 subtract the 117. which is equal to 63 degrees. So here we have 63 degrees. And the reason for that, angles on a straight line would sum to 180. Then we can find out what this angle here is. So the angle BAC, which is this angle here, we can find out, by doing 180, subtract the 54, subtract this 63, and if we work that out, we would get 63 degrees. And so therefore, the reason for this is angles in a triangle sum to 180 degrees. And therefore, what we see is the angle ACB equals the angle BAC, which is 63 degrees. So we've got two equal angles in a triangle, and therefore ABC is isosceles. Question number eight. The picture shows a bus next to a building. The bus has a length of 12 meters. The bus and the building are drawn to the same scale. We have to work out an estimate for the height in meters of the building. Well, if I measure, what we can see is here we have two centimeters. So, in other words, two centimeters would represent the 12 meters. So, if that's the case, well, we want to find an estimate for the height. Well, what we have here is one, two, three, four, five centimeters. And we want to find out the real height of the building. So if two centimeters represents one meter, well, we can show this like a ratio. So we've got two centimeters to 12 meters. Then that means one centimeter will be shown by six meters and therefore five centimeters will be shown by 
30 meters. Question number nine. Nida writes down two different prime numbers. She adds together her two numbers. The answer is a square number less than 30. You have to find two prime numbers that Nida could have written down. So if we find the square numbers less than 30, we've got one squared, which is one, two squared, which is four, three squared, which is nine, four squared, which is 16, and five squared, which is 25. Six squared, that's going to be greater than 30. Now, her answer is a square number less than 30, and we need two prime numbers which add to give a square number. Well, if I take a look at the 9, the 9 is a square number, and 9, we can write the sum as two prime numbers. Remember, two prime, a prime number is a number which has one in itself as factors only. So we have two plus seven. And the two and the seven are the two prime numbers that she could have written down. So we have two and seven. Question number 10. Jim thinks of a number, two thirds of Jim's number is 48. We have to work out 5 sixths of Jim's number. Well, if we work out Jim's number, then 2 thirds of Jim's number, so that's 2 thirds x, that's equal to 48. So we can find out what Jim's number is by working out 48 divided by 2 thirds which is 72. So Jim's number x is 72. We have to work out 5 sixths of Jim's number. So therefore, we have 5 sixths of Jim's number 72. If I work out what this is, 5 sixths times 72 is 60. So, Jim's number is 60. Question number 11. Jack's driving school has two offers. Offer 1. The first driving lesson is free and all other driving lessons are normal price. With offer 2, all driving lessons, we get 5% off the normal price. The normal price of driving lesson is £24. Douglas is going to have 12 driving lessons, which is cheaper. For the 12 driving lessons, offer one or offer two, you must show how you get your answer. Well, let's take a look at offer number one. The first driving lesson is free, and if we're taking 12 driving lessons, we would have to pay for 11 of them. And then each driving lesson is £24, so we multiply 11 by 24. And if we work that out, we get 264. Now, if we think about offer 2, we pay for all driving lessons, so that's 12 driving lessons. Each driving lesson is £24, but then we have to multiply this by 0 0.95. And this 0 0.95 would correspond to having 5% off the normal price. So, working this out, 12 times 24 times 0 0.95, it turns out we get £273.60. So which offer is cheaper? We can therefore conclude Offer 1 is cheaper. Question number 12. 2.5 kilograms of apples cost £3.60. We have to work out the cost of 3.5 kilograms of apples. So, 
we know that 2.5 kilograms is equal to 3 pounds 60. With this we can find out the price of 0 0.5 kilograms worth of apples and then from that find out what 3.5 kilograms of apples is worth. So if I divide through by 5 to begin with, then 360 divided by 5, that's 0.72. So 0.5 kilograms of apples cost 72p. And then if I multiply through by 7, then 0.72 multiplied by 7, we get £5, pounds 4 pence. So we have £5, pounds 4 pence. Question number 13. For part A, we have to complete the table of values for y equals 1 half x minus 1. So what we would have to do here is recognise that our equation of the straight line is y equals 1 half, the same as 0 0.5, x minus 1. So if I add 0 0.5, we can find out what the graph goes up in. So adding 0.5 well minus 2 plus 0.5 that's minus 1.5 adding another minus not adding another 0.5 we get minus 1 adding another minus 0.5 we get minus 0.5 and then 0 plus 0.5 is 0.5 and then for part b, we have to draw the graph of y equals 1 half x minus 1 from minus 2 to 3. Well, if I plot the points, I've got minus 2, minus 2. Then I've got minus 1, minus 1.5, minus 0, minus 1, 1, 0 0.5, 2, 0, and 3, 0 0.5. And then we join all of this up with a straight line as we see here and therefore here we would have the graph of y equals 1 half x minus 1. Then for part b we have to use our graph to find the value of x when y is 0 0.3. Well when y is 0 0.3, 0 0.3 is over here, we draw a line across and then we draw a line down, it turns out we get 2.6. Question number 14. We've got shape A and shape B here, and we have to describe fully the single transformation that maps shape A onto shape B. Well, what we have here is our mirror line which lies on the x-axis and therefore we have a reflection in the x-axis. Question number 15. The ratio of the cost of one metre of cotton fabric to the cost of one metre of silk fabric is 2 to 5. We have to complete the table of cost. So we've got the ratio of cotton to silk. And this ratio is 2 to 5. Now, for 2 metres, the cost is £6. And therefore, if I multiply by 15, rather, if I multiply by 3, then 5 times by 3 is 15. So the cost of 2 metres of silk is £15. So now with this we can find out 
the cost of 6 meters, 8 meters, and 9 meters. Well, what we can do to go from the 2 to the 6 we times by 3. So, 6 times by 3 is 18. 15 times 3 is 45. And for 8, well, to go from 2 to 8, we multiply by 4. 6 times by 4 is 24. 15 times 4 is 60. For 9, well, to go from the 2 to the 9, we times by 4.5. 6 times 4.5 is 27. 15 times 4.5 is 67.50. Question number 16. Chloe has a van. She is going to use the van to deliver boxes. Each box is a cuboid, 40 centimeters by 30 centimeters by 35 centimeters and the space for boxes in the van has a maximum length of 2.4 meters a maximum width of 1.5 meters and a maximum height of 1.4 meters the space for boxes is empty chloe wants to put as many boxes as possible into the van she can put three boxes into the van in one minute assume that the space for boxes is in the shape of a cuboid. For part A, we have to work out how many minutes it should take Chloe to put as many boxes as possible into the van. So let's draw out the van. So here we have 240, here we have 150, and here we have 140 and the units here are centimeters. So, what we need to do is find out how many of these boxes fit into this fun. So, in terms of the length going this way, that will be 240 divided by the corresponding length here, which is 40. So six boxes can fit across this way. Then, if we think about this, well, that will be 150 divided by 30 which is 5, and then this way, we would have 140 divided by 35, which is 4. So we have 4 boxes fitting upwards. So therefore, the total number of boxes is equal to 6 times 5 times 4, which is equal to 120. So we have 120 boxes. And what we need to do is find out how long it will take. Well, if we have three boxes in one minute, that means the time it will take to completely put the boxes into the van 
that will be 120. We've got 120 boxes divided by three. We've got three boxes per minute. So it will take 40 minutes. Then for the next part, the space for boxes might not be in the shape of a cuboid. We have to explain how this could affect the time it would take Chloe to put as many boxes as possible into the van. Well, it would take more time since a different arrangement of boxes would be required. Question number 17, we have to factorise 4m plus 12. Well, what's common to both the 4 and the 12 is a 4. So 4 goes on the outside and then inside, we would have an m plus 3. Next, we've got a series of words here and we have to choose two words from the box above to make the statement correct. Well, we've got 5y is a something in the something 3x plus 5y. Well, the 3x plus 5y, that is an expression. An expression is made up of different terms and therefore 5y is a term. Question number 18. Here is a sequence of patterns made with counters. For part A we have to find an expression in terms of n for the number of counters in the pattern n. Well here we've got four counters. Here we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven counters. Here we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So we've got some sort of a sequence building and what we need to do is find out the nth term of that sequence. Well, to go from one term to the next, we add three. And so the inverse of adding three would be to subtract three. Or subtract three is one. So therefore, for our nth term, we have 3n plus 1. And then for part b, bio has 90 counters. Can bio make a pattern in this sequence using all 90 of his counters? You must show how you get your answer. Well, I've got my nth term, 3n plus 1. And if I set this equal to 90, we can see if n gives a whole number. So 3n is 89 and therefore n is equal to 89 divided by 3 which is 29.6 etc and this is not a whole number and therefore he cannot make a pattern with 90 counters question number 19 the table shows information about the heights of 80 children We've got the height and the frequency. For part A, we have to find the class interval that contains the median. Well, to find out the median, we need to work out 80 divided by 2, which is 40. So we want the 40th value. So, if we find the cumulative frequency, we start off with 4. 4 plus 11 is 15. 15 plus 24 is 39. 39 plus 22 is 61. 61 plus 19, that will give the 80. We want the 40th value, that's in between the 39 and the 61. We choose the bigger one. So the median will be in this interval, 160, which is less than h, which is less than or equal to 170. Then for part b, we have to draw a frequency polygon for the information in the table. Well, what we need to do is, first of all, plot the midpoints. I've got 135 here, I've got 145 here, 
155 here, 165 here, 170 over here. So if we plot those, we've got 135, and then we plot that with the frequency of 4, and then we join that with 145, 11. So I've got 135, 4, and I need to join this with 145, 11. Then I need to join this to 155, 24. So 155, 24, that is over here. Then I've got 165.22, so 165.22 is over here, and then I've got 175, rather, 19. So joining that up, 175 and 19 is over here. So here is the completed cumulative frequency, uh, the, the complete completed frequency polygon. Question number twenty: In London, one litre of petrol cost one hundred and eight point nine p. In New York, one U.S. gallon of petrol cost two eighty three dollars. One U.S. gallon is equal to three point seven eight five litres. One pound is equal to one dollar forty six. In which city is petrol better value for money? London or New York? You must show you're working. Let's think about what's going on in London. We've got one litre, which is equal to 1.089 pounds. And we can convert this into dollars by multiplying by 1.46. So 1.089 times 1.04, we get 1.58994 dollars. Now, if we think about what's going on in New York, we've got one gallon which is equal to 283. We can convert this into litres by multiplying by 3.785. So 3.785 litres is equal to 2. 83, we can find out what 1 litre is worth by dividing by 3.785. So for one litre, this will equal 283 divided by this, rather 283 divided by 3.785, which is 1.5. Four seven, etc. So per litre we can see that New York is cheaper. Question number 21. A gold bar has mass 12.5 kilograms. The density of gold is 19.3 grams per centimetre cubed. We have to work out the volume of the gold bar. Give your answer correct to three significant figures. Well, we've got kilograms and grams. If I multiply by 1000, 
I can go from kilograms to grams and if I divide by 1000 I can go from grams to kilograms so therefore the gold bar would have mass 12.5 times a thousand which is 12,500 grams so we need to find out the volume the volume is equal to the mass divided by the density so if we work this out we get 647.66 etc centimeters cubed so to three significant figures we have 647 rather 648 to three significant figures question number 22 there are only blue pens green pens and red pens in a box the ratio of the number of blue pens to the number of green pens is two to five the ratio of the number of green pens to the number of red pens is four to one there are less than 100 pens in the box what is the greatest possible number of red pens in the box so to do this question what we know is the ratio of blue to green is 2 to 5 and green to red is 4 to 1 so we can use this information to find the ratio of blue to green to red we know blue to green 2 to 5 green to red is 4 to 1 we want a common number for green like 20 5 times by 4 is 20 so 2 times by 4 is 8 and 4 times by 5 is 20 so 1 times by 5 is 5 so we have the ratio of blue to green to red being 8 to 20 to 5 so to find out the number of red well in total we have 8 plus 20 plus 5 which is 33 so we have 33 parts and so the fraction which are red is 5 out of 33 and then if there's less than 100 pens in the box and we need to find out the greatest number of pens multiplying this by 100 we get a value which is around 15 so the greatest number of red pens is 15 question number 23 for part a we have to find the value of the reciprocal of 1.6 as a decimal the reciprocal of 1.6 that just means 1 over 1.6 so if I work out what this is, we get 0 0.625. Then for the next part, just rounds a number x to one decimal place. The result is 9.8. We have to write down the error interval. Well, we've got 9.8. 75 which is less than or equal to x which is less than 9.85 question number 24 here is a rectangle the length of the rectangle is seven centimeters longer than the width of the rectangle four of these rectangles are used to make this eight-sided shape and the perimeter of the eight-sided shape is 70 centimeters and we have to work out the area of this eight-sided shape so we've got this length here which we'll call x and this over here then is seven centimeters longer 
x plus 7. Now on this 8 sided shape let's try to build this up. I've got x plus 7, x plus 7, x plus 7 and x plus 7. Then I've got x here, x here, x here and x here. But then this missing length we have a total of x plus 7 and then I subtract this bit which is x. So this here is 7 and this here is 7. So now we need to work out the perimeter. Well I've got 1, 2, 3, 4 of those x's. So I've got 4 multiplied by x and then I've got 1, 2, 3, 4 of those x plus 7's and then I've also got 2 of these 7's and the total perimeter is 70 4x plus 4x plus 28 plus 14 is 70 so we have 8x plus 42 is 70 so 8x is equal to 28 which means x is 3.5 So, if I draw a rectangle, such as the one here, I've got, th I have 3.5 here and 7 more than this, 10.5 here. So it turns out the area of one of those rectangles is 36.75. So, because I've got four of those rectangles I would have four times by 36.75 which is 147 so we end up with 147 question number 25 we have to work out 13.8 times 10 to the 7 times 5.4 times 10 to the minus 12 so if we work out what this is, I've got 13.8 times 10 to the 7 being multiplied by 5.4 times 10 to the minus 12. And it turns out we get 7.452 times 10 to the minus 4. So I've got this 7 point four five two and what I need to do is move the decimal place one two three four to the left fill these up with zeros and therefore we end up with not point not 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 seven four five two Question number 26. When a drawing pin is dropped, it can land point down or point up. Lucy, Mel, and Tom each dropped the drawing pin a number of times. The table shows the number of times the drawing pin landed point down and the number of times the drawing pin landed point up for each person. So we've got Lucy, Mel, and Tom, and then Rachel is going to drop the drawing pin once, whose result will give the best estimate for the probability that the drawing pin will land point up. Give a reason for your answer. Well, the total number of throws Lucy had, that will equal 31 plus 14, which is 45. For Mel, 53 plus 27, she had 80 throws. And 16 plus 9, that's 25. So Tom had 25 throws. 
the number of times the pin landed point down, we've got 31 plus 53 plus 16, which is 100. And for point up, 14 plus 27 plus 9, that's 50. So it landed 50 times point up. And the total number of times they've thrown is 100. So when we come to find out who has the best estimate of the probability, well, who's got the most number of throws? That's Mel. So the reason is Mel is because she had the greatest number of throws of 80. Next, for part B, Stuart is going to drop the drawing pin twice, and we have to use all the results in the table to work out an estimate for the probability that the drawing pin will land point up the first time and point down the second time. Well, the probability that it lands pin down, that's equal to, well, We've got 100 out of, rather here we've got 100 out of 150. And this simplifies to two thirds. And for pin up, the probability that lands pin up is 50 out of 150. Which is one third. And so what we are looking for is the probability of landing pin up and pin down. So that is equal to one third multiplied by two thirds, which is two ninths. So we have two ninths. Question number 27, we have to solve the simultaneous equations x plus 3y equals 12 and 5x minus y equals 4. So if I call this equation 1 and if I call this equation 2, ignoring the signs we can get the y's the same by timesing the second equation by 3. And doing so we would end up with 15x minus 3y equals 12. So if I now add together equation 1 and 3, then we have x plus 16, 15x, which is 16x, 12 plus 12, which is 24. 16x is 24 which means x is equal to 1.5. And then when x is 1.5, we can find out what y is. Substituting into equation 1, we've got 1.5 plus 3y equals 12. 3y is 10.5. And therefore y is equal to 10.5 divided by 3 which is 3.5. So we have x is 1.5 and y, which is 